Today we're going to show you how to change the surface element terminal block kit on your range. It's a really easy job. All you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver, quarter inch nut driver, a pair of wire strippers and crimpers, and if you have a heat gun, you can use that as well. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we're going to do is to disconnect the power to the range. If it has a cord on it, simply unplug it. And if it's a hardwired range, you'll need to locate the breakers or the fuses and disconnect the power there. Now our next step will be to remove all four of the elements, trim rings and drip bowls, and set those aside. The elements just pull straight back and lift out, and the trim ring and drip bowl lift out of the opening. Once you've removed all four, we'll next remove Phillips screw that holds the terminal block to the main top in each of those openings. And then just pull the terminal block forward and let it drop down. Next you'll find a quarter inch hex head screw holding a bracket to the main top that holds it to the top of the oven body. So we'll need to either disconnect that quarter inch screw or the Phillips screw that goes into the edge of the burner opening. Now your model may have one or two of those brackets on it. If so, they would be located right at the front of either the left or the right burner. Now that you've removed that, you can simply lift up on the front of the main top. It's hinged at the back. Lift it up and have something there to support it either against the wall or somebody to hold it so that you can do the repair. Now that we have the main top lifted up and have access to the terminal blocks, choose the one that needs to be replaced and we'll cut that wire off about a couple of inches from the terminal block. Just snip them off and we'll strip back about all three-eighths of an inch to a half an inch of the insulation on both wires. Now we can discard the old terminal block and we'll take one of the new wires. We'll slide a piece of that heat shrink tubing over the wire first. And then we'll pair two of those wires together and with the ceramic wire nut, thread that on good and tight. We'll do the same for the other one. Just slide a piece of that heat shrink over the wire lead. the two wire ends together and then thread on the wire nut. Now we'll simply just fold that wire back over the wire nut, slide the heat shrink into place so that it covers that joint. And then with either a butane lighter, or if you happen to have a heat shrink heat gun, you can use that instead. Next, we'll take the bake light terminal block, and you'll note how the old one was mounted in there. The slanted portion was towards the top. And the individual wire terminals, the large open area on one side, which will line up with a rib in the center of the actual bake light terminal block. So we'll slide those in 
they latch into place. Make sure they firmly locked into position. And we'll select one of the two mounting brackets that come with the kit, match it with the type that was used. And we'll simply snap that over the terminal block and we're ready to install it. Now that we have the terminal block replaced, we can lower our main top into position, secure it with the one or two brackets, whichever your model head. Next, we'll pull the individual terminal blocks up into position and secure them to the main top with a Phillips screw. Now we can install the drip bowls and trim rings and elements. Set the drip bowl in first. Make sure it's sitting in flat properly. Next, the trim ring. And then plug the element into the terminal block. Now that we have all of the elements and bowls back in place, we're ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete.